Getting amazing sound in a car is an uphill battle, and that battle starts under the hood. Your car's electrical system is commonly referred to as a 12-volt system. That's about a tenth of the voltage in a typical wall outlet here in the United States. More on all that later. Because that voltage is so low, you immediately collide with two natural laws, Ohm's law and Watt's law. According to Watt's law, power measured in watts is a function of voltage measured in volts and current measured in amperes. Since your car has limited voltage, the only way to make more power according to Watt's law is to increase the current. Ohm's law says that your voltage is a function of your current multiplied by your resistance. In a car with a limited amount of voltage, that means your ability to deliver the current your amplifier craves Rondo's got what amps crave. Is capped by the resistance of your wire. The solution is easy. You just need to run a big thick copper power cable or maybe multiple big thick power cables from your battery to your amplifier. But that creates a whole new problem. Thick copper wire is expensive. 20 years ago, copper was a buck 50 a pound. At the time of filming, it was trading for around $4 a pound. And it's been as high as $5 a pound. To put it in context, a foot of zero gauge wire should have about two thirds of a pound of copper. And of course that copper has to be made into a bunch of tiny strands and wrapped together as a complete wire and then bundled inside of an insulator before it's useful. Quality zero gauge wire can be five or six bucks a foot. Of course, if you check the video description, I'll give you links to some good quality affordable alternatives. Plus, I'm gonna show you when it's safe to use a smaller wire or when it makes sense to consider a cheaper aluminum wire. To do that, I've got a new tool that I wanna share with you and make sure you keep watching because I've got some really good information about the consequences of using the wrong wire size later on in the video. And here it is, this is a power wire calculator. I'll make sure to put a link to this calculator down in the video description. So technically speaking, this is a voltage drop calculator. And what you'll do when you hit the website is just scroll down until you get to the calculator. There's some stuff here in between with some instructions. You're free to read that if you want to. Jumping right to the calculator, the first thing that you do is input the type of wire that you're using. You can either use oxygen-free copper OFC or CCA copper clad aluminum. OFC is is a better wire. CCA is inferior but cheaper. If you choose CCA, the calculator will give you a little warning message telling you it's not the best wire. More on that later. But because it's cheaper and therefore a viable alternative, the calculator will still let you choose that wire type. Next, you enter your amplifier power. Just go with 1500 watts. Keep in mind that if you're using a stock factory charging system, you're going to have a hard limit on the amount of power you can send to your amplifier. Most cars are designed to generate enough power to operate the car plus a little bit of overhead for aftermarket equipment. My personal recommendation is to draw a line at 1,000 watts. If you wanna run more than 1,000 watts, you're gonna to need to upgrade your alternator or your battery or even both. You might even need to run a second or third battery. So I don't recommend using more than 1,000 watts unless you're willing to spend money on batteries and alternators. And of course, there is a link to a suggested place to buy batteries and alternators if you wanna do that. The next thing you're gonna do is enter your voltage. I said earlier that cars were 12 volts. They're not actually 12 volt systems. They actually run higher than 12 volts. Some will go as high as 14.4. The actual voltage that you're gonna get is gonna depend on your car. My own vehicle, the ECU clamps down on the voltage. So I very rarely see more than 14 volts in the vehicle. So your job here is to enter a reasonable number. I'm gonna go with 13.8. 13.8 is a good safe place to start. The calculator will allow you to go as high as 16 for those of you that have modified your charging system to charge at higher voltages. Next is your amplifier efficiency. Class AB amplifiers are supposed to be about 60% efficient. Class D are supposed to be 75 or 80% efficient. Cheap amps are less efficient than good quality amps. I recommend 75 is a good safe number to work with. Then enter the length of your main power wire running from your battery back to your amplifier. I think 15 feet is a reasonable number for most four-door sedans. Then you can choose the size wire. We're going to choose a nice cheap eight gauge wire and we're gonna hit calculate and we get <laughs> red text because something is wrong. Two things have happened. First of all, this 1500 watt system is going to be drawing just shy of 150 amperes of current. Eight gauge wire can't handle that amount of current. And we have excessive voltage drop. The calculator is designed to give you a warning message. So what we can then do is pick a different wire. Let's say we jump up to four gauge and we hit calculate. The voltage drop did change, but it's not low enough yet. So what I want to do now is go back up here and choose a slightly better wire and see if that works. That helped a little bit. So now let's try a zero gauge wire and hit calculate. 
And there we go. We have an acceptable voltage drop and we've chosen a wire that can handle the current that we need to draw. And of course you can just head over to this calculator and just spend all day clicking around and experimenting with it, trying to find the exact best wire to use for your purpose. And after you know what size wire that you need, if you're not sure where you can find that wire, the calculator will provide a suggestion for you. All you've got to do is click on the link. For double odd and quad odd wire, the calculator will suggest wire by the foot. For everything else, it'll take you to a wire kit. Hit. This link here, for example, takes you to the Down for Sound website where they sell their own brand of wire. And this is the only wire that I use. A lot of brands will sell you undersized wire, but this is not. This is true to sized wire and it is a tinned oxygen free copper. The individual copper strands have been coated to reduce corrosion. This is wire that's not been tinned. You can clearly see the copper. And right here is a piece of wire that has been tinned. Both of these are eight gate. At first glance, the tinned wire looks like it's not copper wire. If we cut it, you can clearly look at the end of the wire and see that it is copper. When you order a wire kit, make sure it has the following items. It'll come with a long power wire, typically in red, but you can get any color that you want. A short ground wire, typically in black, but again, you can get pretty much any color that you might want. Just make sure you don't use the same color for both your power and your ground. A fuse, fuse holders. You'll have a small, long, thin blue wire. This is your amplifier turn on lead. It'll come with various connectors, sometimes already crimped onto the wire. Good kits will come with shrink wrap like this so that you can have nice clean connections. These are RCA wires. A lot of kits will come with either two channel or four channel RCA wires. I find I often need six channel RCAs and so I usually buy my own RCA wires. These things right here are important safety devices. This firewall grommet, you need to install this where the wire passes through the firewall so that bare metal doesn't cut into the wire. When that happens, the wire is gonna to short to ground because all the metal in your car is a ground. If this wire shorts out to ground, the fuse under the hood will blow. And if it doesn't, you're gonna be shopping for a new car. If you plan to install multiple amplifiers, you'll more than likely run a very large wire from the battery to your amplifier mounting location, and then split that wire into smaller wires to go into the amplifiers. When you drop down in wire size, you need to add a fuse. The fuse is there to protect the wire. If you don't add a fuse size for that smaller wire, if that smaller wire hits bare metal and shorts out, the main fuse under the hood might not blow and you're gonna start a fire. Before we go back into the calculator and do a couple of more examples i want to show you some charts that will help you understand on a deeper level while i'm doing that i want to say thank you to all of my patrons over on patreon if you want to see more content like this the best thing you can do is to support me directly by heading over to patreon and signing up if you pay for a whole year up front you can get 10 percent discount on your patron membership as always i want to give a as always, I want to give a special thank you to my $25 and up patrons, Jonathan, Joaquin, JD America, Timothy, and Bo. On the screen right now is a chart in a spreadsheet. I put this together years ago, and what this does is it shows how much power your wire is going to steal from your amplifier. Now, what I want you to notice is the gap between CCA and OFC. Let's look at the raw numbers behind this chart. This first table is going to show voltage drop. This is what our calculator is is showing us. This is for a 20 foot run, which is kind of a long run of four gauge wire. What we can see is that a four gauge wire can handle hundred amps of current, but that is the upper limit to what it can handle if it's OFC wire, if you use CCA wire, you hit the wall much earlier. The way I like to think about it is right here, if you're trying to pull 100 amps of current down that power wire, four gauge wire, 20 foot run, 70% amp efficiency, the copper wire is gonna steal 71 watts, but the CCA wire is gonna steal 110. By upgrading the wire, you effectively make your amplifier more powerful. Let me show you what happens when you pop up to zero gauge wire. It makes quite a difference. Now with 100 amps of current draw, the copper wire is only stealing 28 watts and the CCA wire is stealing 44. What this demonstrates is that insufficient wire is going to choke off your amplifier. Your amplifier cannot reach its full potential. Heading back over to the calculator, here is another example. Let's say we had 500 watts of power, 14 volts with a 75% efficiency amplifier, a short run of 10 feet, and some 8 gauge wire. If we hit calculate, what we see here is that with a a short run and a low power amplifier, eight gauge wire is perfectly fine. It'll get the job done. If we switch to CCA, look what happens. We're now drawing excessive current down that cheap CCA wire. Here's another example of my current setup. I'm using 
OFC wire. I have an amp that I suspect can do about 3000 watts. I do have an upgraded battery and alternator. I'm running right around 14 volts. I don't know the efficiency of the amp. I'm gonna put in 80 and my power wire length is really just long enough to reach a fuse block and then just long enough to reach the amp so it couldn't possibly be a foot and it is of course zero gauge wire we hit calculate and we get 0 0.026 volts of voltage the other amplifier in the system going right off the battery into a fuse then over to the amp it's got about a four foot run of power wire that amp could in theory probably pull about a thousand watts it is a nice brand amplifier so it is probably pretty efficient i've got about four feet of four gauge wire I do I don't have any worries about voltage drop so I am good to go hopefully you are too if you want to learn more about power wire check out this playlist on the screen right here I'm Justin this is the DIY audio guy YouTube channel and I will see you on the next adventure